Um, and uh, whose idea was it? Uh, we've heard different reports that it might have been Ivanka's idea. It may have been Jared's idea. Who's, whose idea was it to brutalize protesters, peaceful protesters? Look at the clip, Marco. Peaceful protesters uh, in the President's Park in Lafayette Square uh, and, and to, to beat up uh, reporters and cameramen from Australia uh, to beat up protesters, uh, to use tear gas, to lie about uh, uh, using these techniques, to brutalize all of these people. Also, the president can trot across with the secretary of defense. Uh, here's the Australian crew getting beaten up for just standing there. Those are our allies, by the way, jackasses. Those guys fought in real wars. We're in foxholes with American GIs for over 100 years, jackasses. You're a disgrace. You're an absolute disgrace. And, 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 and I certainly hope, I know the President of the United States won't do it, I certainly hope somebody in Washington, D.C., in an official position, will apologize to the people of Australia. Whose idea Our longest was and most loyal allies over the last hundred or so years, again, fighting with us in every war. And this is how we treat their reporters. By the way, we're treating our reporters that way, too. It's disgraceful. But these sort of things happen after you call the press enemies of the people for three, four years. Uh, anyway, um, so, so whose idea was all of this? Bob Costa, who hatched this idea that so repulsed the majority of Americans? I've been spending the last 12 hours trying to figure this out, and here's what I've learned. At the end of the day, many aides in the White House were talking about walking across Lafayette Square. You had Kellyanne Conway, the counselor to the president, yesterday on the record talking to reporters saying the president wasn't aware of what his movements would do in terms of security. You hear a lot of aides saying they weren't fully informed, like Secretary Esper is saying, about how this would all play out. Uh -huh. But based on my conversations with some of the top people in the government and Congress, at the end of the day, this was President Trump's decision. Did others talk about it in the Oval Office? Jared Kushner, Ivanka Trump, Hope Hicks? Yes, they did. Mark Meadows as well. But this was President Trump. And the context here is this is a president who behind the scenes on Monday was repeatedly God. telling governors on a conference call and his aides that he wanted to dominate the streets, control the streets. They talked about the Insurrection Act, bringing the military into cities and states across this country, even if governors and mayors did not want the U.S. military there. This was a president who all day Monday was thinking about force, talking about force. And and and, uh, and and doing this to peaceful protesters and to reporters. Uh, also, he can oh. walk across the street and awkwardly hold up a Bible. It is grotesque. Yeah. And it, it, so I don't care Trump -like. whether 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 you're a Christian or not. Just just read the red letters in the Gospels. This so goes against everything Jesus Christ taught. Everything, whether you're a believer or not, to hold up that Bible after brutalizing peaceful protesters in the park is really shocking. And Wes, um, as a military man, let me ask you, um, if, if you were as shocked as was I, uh, seeing the Secretary of Defense in a photo op in front of a church after these peaceful protesters had been brutalized uh, because of the president's plans. You know, there's a, uh, I'm just coming up on my anniversary of when I actually enlisted to join the United States Army. Uh, I was actually 17 years old and I actually had to get my mom's permission to join. And the oath that I took said that I will solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. What were the protesters doing except expressing their First Amendment right? What were the protesters doing besides exercising their constitutional right? And so the idea that my former unit, the 82nd Airborne Division, is now being activated and called in to potentially quell protesters who are exercising their constitutional right is absolutely baffling to me. 
And 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 it, it goes past the idea that it is against an oath. It also goes to the idea that it's not effective. So if we think about what is our goal in all of this, if the goal <laughs> is actually to bring the temperature down, if the goal is to actually get us to a point where we can have a conversation and actually pursue justice in a very real way. I have yet to see a single data point that shows that an acceleration of militarization leads to a pacification of protesters. You know, we saw we saw this last night in Columbus. You know, th this is a city that has seen violent clashes between police and protesters during this process. And police, the police changed their tactics last night, changed their presence, and it became more peaceful. We saw it in, in cities like Newark and cities like Flint, where, and these are cities that have been devastated by poverty and inequality, where you have protesters and you have activists and you have community members who are rightfully mad. But their police forces actually took a different tactic. The police forces, for the, large, for the most part, actually kept the batons and the shields at home. And those have been two of uh, two areas, both Newark and Flint, have been two of the areas that have had the most peaceful protests that we've seen throughout this entire time. So it both goes back to a challenge of what was the constitutional oath that people took? And also, what is the goal that you are actually trying to achieve in this? Because right now, if there's a certain goal you're trying to achieve, your tactics have no basis of actually having this chance of work. So the Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.